Welcome to Van Life with Steve, and thank you for joining me for a look at Niagara Falls State Park. Here's a map of the overview of the park, and as we take a look at the sign, here are the three mistakes you don't want to make when visiting the park. Number one, don't forget your passport. Make sure you bring one. Also, make sure you show up early to beat the crowds. And finally, don't forget to explore, and I'll elaborate on each of these as we go through the video. Here we have a view of the Skyline Tower, which is over 500 feet tall. It offers you the best view of the falls, which is why you don't want to forget your passport when you visit Niagara Falls. I personally don't think it's worth it to come up here without a passport. You get the best view of the falls from the Canadian border. So mistake number one that you don't want to make is do not forget your passport. And Horseshoe Falls, which I thought was known as Niagara Falls, is just one of just three waterfalls at the park. It's the most powerful of all of the three waterfalls, and it's the most powerful waterfall in North America. And here we'll have a listen how powerful the waterfall is. Horseshoe Falls is also known as Canadian Falls. It has an average height of about 187 feet and is almost 2,600 feet wide, and it has a peak flow rate of about 100 cubic feet per second uh, during the summertime. Amazing sight to see. Here's a quick peek at the Made of the Mist boat ride. And because of all the mist that's generated by the waterfalls, you see a bunch of these amazing looking rainbows. It's really cool. Here you're looking at Canada where they film scenes for Superman 2. And the group of people there in the yellow, they're waiting to go on the journey behind the falls, but you can't get to unless you're in Canada. And that's going to bring me to mistake number two that I made. I uh, need to make sure you get there early. I actually did get there early, but I ate breakfast in the van. And before I knew it, a whole bunch of people had showed up. And the lines to get to the observation tower and to journey behind the falls and all that got really, really long. Also, you don't want to go there on a weekend. You know, obviously, there's going to be more people, but they also charge you more for parking. It's $10 Monday through Thursday. It's 15 Friday through Sunday. Moving on to the Tesla statue without Nikola Tesla's contributions, uh, hydroelectric power wouldn't be as feasible because, you know, AC current enables you to transmit electricity over long distances. You can see the another Made of the Mist boat going there in the distance. That's twenty-eight fifty to ride that. You also get a ticket to the observation uh, deck included in that. Here we have Bridal Veil Falls. So between, in the Niagara River, you have Goat Island. And between Goat Island and the mainland, there's Luna Island. And between that, that section of the river creates Bridal Bell Falls, which is the smallest of the three falls. The nice thing about Luna Island is you can get up there and get a great look down over the edge at both Bridal Veil and American Falls. And you can see all the people lined up for Cave of the Winds. Again, the great thing about Luna Island is you can just get right up there close to the edge and you just get a great sense of, of the power of the water. It's just really amazing. As we head up to Hell's Half Acre here, if you're enjoying this content, I'd appreciate it so much if you give me a like, subscribe, and turn on the bell for notifications to make sure you're notified for my next video. Thank you so much. Here we're looking at the section of the Niagara River that separates Goat Island from the United States mainland. And it's a pretty nice area. There's less people here. And it's a very kind of calm, relaxing kind of walk. And it's a great area where you can get away from the crowd.
Now that we've crossed over the Niagara River, we're now on the eastern end of American Falls, and you can see Luna Island and the Horseshoe Falls observation in the distance. Over 90% of all the water that flows over the falls goes over Horseshoe Falls, but American Falls in and of itself is still an extremely impressive waterfall. It's a, about 100 feet tall and uh, just a very powerful waterfall also. Here we have the Rainbow Bridge, which is what you take to cross over to Canada. I thought I might get cute and see if I could get over, get on the bridge to take a picture, but uh, you know I didn't want to play any games with customs or anything like that. But this brings me into mistake number three that you don't want to make, and that is to make sure that you explore all of the other areas around the falls. The falls are extremely impressive, and that's what brings everybody there. But the entire Niagara. Gorge is a really a great area to see. You have chipmunks, you have great walking paths. We'll take a look at some power plant ruins here in a minute. Down Niagara Gorge, somewhere down there is where Lois Lane jumped into the river and Clark Sager. Here's the power plant ruins, and there was almost no one there. And so that's why I say, you know, to get away from the crowds. And you can come down here and get on this walking path. And it's very peaceful. There's not a lot of people around. And it's a, a really uh, nice um, break from the crowds over there at the waterfalls. So definitely check it out. It's also a good opportunity to get down close to the river as well. So now we're going to make our way back across the Niagara River, back on the Goat Island, and explore that island a little bit more. Three Sisters Island is an offshoot to the far west of Goat Island. And again, it's a, another great place to get away from the crowd and to have some solitude. And it also offers you a good chance to do some bird watching. As we head back up the Niagara River for one last look at Horseshoe Falls, overall, really enjoyed an afternoon trip to Niagara Falls. I do think things were a little bit more pricey than what I expected, and ultimately, I did not do the Made of the Mist or the Cave of the Wind. Basically, those together cost $50, and all the lines were super long, and so I didn't feel like it was a good use of my time because I knew I'd have to. I knew I'll visit at another time with a passport, and at that point, I'll do more. But between the Cave of the Winds and May of the Mist and parking, I was a little surprised that all that can add up to $65. But overall, it's a fun way to spend a day or an afternoon. Thank you so much for watching.